Thanks for being here, everyone. This is incredible. So the impact of our second generation technology is immense. And what it allows us to do is scale autonomy, not only to different types of machines, but also to new crops, and as you'll see, even new industries. So today, we're bringing autonomy to high value crops. So let's get to our next two announcements. Now, high value crops are different from the traditional rolling corn and soybean fields that you might be familiar with in the Midwest. And they include things like fruits and vegetables and nuts. And as you may know, California is one of the largest producers of high value crops in the world. In fact, about 90% of all tree nuts grown in the United States are grown in California. And 77% of the world's almond production also comes from the Golden State. The problem is California growers are facing a severe labor shortage. Now, almost half of all available equipment operator jobs in the state are currently unfilled. And a major reason for this is that those jobs are among the most physically taxing and grueling jobs available. Now, one of the most challenging jobs for California farmers to fill is also the most frequent, air blast spraying in tree nut orchards. The work is exhausting and it's repetitive, but it's absolutely necessary to protect those trees from pests and disease. So in order to do this job, workers need to drive up and down endless orchard rows for up to 10 hours a day at two and a half miles an hour. Every single tree in that orchard needs to be sprayed at least six to eight times per year. So that means the workers are starting in February and going through July or August, right into the hottest time of the year. And to make matters worse, the kicker is, all of this needs to happen at night. Thankfully, technology can help. The feeling I have when I walk down my fields is pride. I walk these fields every day to see a crop grow is inspirational. Every year I grow about 10 million pounds of almonds, walnuts, and pistachios. My name is Russell Michael. I'm a tree nut farmer in Northern California. Growing walnuts and almonds and pistachios is a complex job. It's ever-changing. You have to stay up on top of new technology. During harvest, it's not uncommon for me to work 14 to 18 hour days. Never in my life did I expect an autonomous tractor to exist. I was of the age starting to farm where we had no cell phones. <laughs> so to make the leap from no cell phones to being able to control a tractor from my phone is it's like phew. That you could physically see where this tractor is on an app, watch its production, start it, stop it, see it in the field, driving down the row, doing its job, this is exciting. I mean, I think it's gonna be exciting for the entire farming community. Autonomy will change how we do things in farming, strengthen what we have in getting operations done in the field on a routine basis without the complexity of having employees manage driving tractors and training them how to drive tractors. You will be able to program a tractor to do an operation my way. I can make that tractor go where I want it to go for my reasons. Future of autonomy is just gonna explode once we see the efficacy of autonomous tractors in the orchard. People will adopt this as their routine. 20 years ago, I would not have believed it. 
is going to change everything. How awesome was that? It's fantastic. So today, our team is extremely proud to reveal two new orchard tractors. Now, there's a lot of similarities between our autonomous tillage solution and our autonomous orchard solution. They both use our second generation autonomy kit, and that's built on the John Deere tech stack. And that means they share things like consistent hardware and cameras and even user interfaces. But there's also sufficient differences in the environments that these tractors operate in that require a unique approach. So unlike tillage, which takes place in these vast open fields, orchard tractors need to navigate through dense canopies with trees that are up to 30 feet tall. That's much taller than the tractor itself, and those, the density of those branches create challenges for traditional GPS. And so these challenges have required a different approach for obstacle detection and navigation. So in addition to the seven cameras around the tractor, we've also introduced LiDAR sensors as well. Now, LiDARs provide depth information, and that allows the tractor to know where the trees are and how to navigate between them. So that ensures the tractor can drive straight down the row while identifying what is or isn't an obstacle, which is much trickier in this environment. So if the tractor sees a human or a pickup truck or irrigation piping or a bee box, like literally a hive of pollination bees, you're gonna to wanna to avoid that. It knows whether it should stop or drive around the obstacle. So one of the coolest visualizations is what the tractor sees through its LiDAR sensors as it's going down the road. So let's take a look. This is what humans would see. And then over here, we can see the tractor has identified the trees, put red bounding circles around them. It can see small obstacles. And you can even tell the tractor is calculating the optimal route through that orchard many times a second. Now you may have noticed that our second tractor looks a little bit different. And that's because this one is fully electric. So this fully electric tractor is powered by up to five immersion cooled batteries. And that means that farmers can not only meet their operational needs, but also achieve their sustainability goals as well. Plus, fuel costs, maintenance costs, and maintenance downtime are all reduced by about half. Today, we're testing this electric tractor with real customers in real orchards, and our plan is to introduce autonomy as we scale the pace of autonomy across our fleet. So as I said, we're extremely proud and excited to help farmers like Russell change how they farm while seeding the future of autonomy in more orchards.